Our next section of The Nation Divides in Two Unit is the abolition movement. During the 1800s, many people began to feel that slavery was wrong and it should be ended. Um, it was ending throughout the world. England had abolished slavery and um, other nations, mo most modern nations around the world were getting rid of slavery in their home countries. And uh, many of these people in the United States began the abolition movement. Now, for the most part, these people were located in the north, and there are a variety of reasons for that. First of all, um, most settlers in the northern colonies had been religious, and slavery goes against religious dogma. Um, it goes against the beliefs of the church, and it, it's just a, it's cruel to the human condition. So, uh, that's one reason. Another reason is in the North, there were not a lot of slaves. There were very, there wasn't much need because farming was not taking place in the North to the scale that it was in the South. So here are some vocabulary words. The abolition movement is the movement to end slavery in the United States. And it was rooted, like we said, in the North, <clears throat> and it was trying to end slavery in the entire country. To abolish means to put an end to something. And the actual people that are going out to end slavery in the United States were called abolitionists. And there are a lot of sites in this area that show the support of the abolition movement. Um, we have houses that were used as stops along the Underground Railroad that we'll talk about. And we over in Boston, there are a lot of places where the abolition the abolitionists had uh, meetings, great meetings and rallies to end slavery. So let's look at a few of these abolitionists that gained a lot of notoriety, but keep in mind that there were thousands and thousands of people involved in this movement, and it was not popular at all for quite a while. Um, it, was, it was met with violence, met with hatred, and um, the government, you know, didn't support it, and because it was going to be, it would cause such huge problems throughout our nation to end slavery. It would basically destroy the southern way of life and um, could lead us to civil war, which you'll see happens. So Frederick Douglass, he's one of the more well-known abolitionists. He was born as a slave and he escaped to the north. And his slave, his uh, experiences during his enslavement he put into a book he wrote his own he wrote an autobiography and he spoke and he uh, met with President Lincoln he really did a lot to spread the story of what it was like to be a slave and to show the cruelty and of it and um, the destructiveness of it he began a, began a newspaper in Rochester called the North Star and the North Star is what slaves could use, the actual North Star. Um, slaves in the South could use that to escape to the North. It's always pointing North. And so the, his newspaper, he used that name to publish articles about the abolition movement and to encourage people to support the movement. Um, Harriet Tubman, she was an escaped slave, and she risked her life and freedom to return to the South as a conductor on the Underground Railroad. She went back again and again to bring people, to lead people out, and we'll, we'll talk about the Underground Railroad through this course. And She gained a nickname of Moses because she led hundreds of people, of her people, out of bondage, much like the biblical Moses. Um, a reward of $40,000 was offered for her capture, dead or alive, and that is a lot of money. So there were many, many people that were after her, and she made a huge impact on the abolition movement. Harriet Beecher Stowe, in, um, in the late 1850s, wrote a book, an anti-slavery book called Uncle Tom's Cabin. And in this book, she describes the evils of slavery when a slave owner whips, a, whips one of his slaves to death. And the book spread the, through the country like wildfire. It was banned in the South, meaning if you were caught with it, you'd get in trouble. And um, it was read by thousands of people. And it really was one of the huge um, pieces of the puzzle, of the abolition puzzle. 
and it made people understand how, or at least believe to understand how cruel and awful slavery was. It angered the, the Northerners against slavery. It angered the Southerners against the Northerners. It was, uh, it was just hugely influential. Another abolitionist is John Brown. He was more on the radical end. He led a group of anti-slavery people or abolitionists in Kansas and murdered five pro-slavery people. And he said that the Lord told him to do it. Um, so that's pretty scary. And uh, he also then moved to the East Coast and he wanted to start a slave revolt. Now there were slave revolts happening throughout the South. They happened all through our nation's history. <clears throat> but being coordinated by, by a white man was something different. And so he, um, he armed slaves, he armed uh, other supporters, and you know, now we're seeing that the abolition movement may have a militaristic side to it, rather than just getting the laws changed or helping slaves escape from the South. Instead, they were being armed, slaves were being armed. So this was very, very scary. And uh, like it says there, he was views, viewed as a hero in the North, and the South blamed the North and said that the North would use violence to end slavery. Now, that's not tr totally true. Not every Northerner supported John Brown. Not every Northerner supported abolition. Not every Southerner supported slavery and hated John Brown. So um, you, you have to be aware that there were a lot of different opinions floating around at this time about how to deal with slavery and how to deal with uh, the future of our nation. So um, you see the star there. Many Southerners would not consider abolishing slavery because of its importance to the Southern economy. Their economy depended on slavery because it was an agrarian economy. And um, the, reading the following quote here, rather than yield our dearest rights and privileges, which would be slavery, we should see the Union scattered to the winds. Now that saying, scattered to the winds, means broken apart and thrown out just to go wherever it wants to go. So the South really wants to break away from the Union because the Union isn't letting the South do what they want to do. Here are some images of the abolitionists, some of them that we talked about. You see Harriet Tubman in the top left, Frederick Douglass, Sojourner Truth is another leader of the, in the abolition movement. William Lloyd Garrison, Harriet Beecher Stowe, who wrote Uncle Tom's Cabin. And then there's a little drawing of the Underground Railroad, people on the Underground Railroad. And notice there are no trains, there are no tracks. It was just, they were footpaths from the south to the north, or different houses that people could stop at as they walked and hid in wagons and you know, did whatever they could to get out of the South. This map shows where the slaves were located in the South and all the orange and yellow sections. The lines and arrows show the known routes used on the Underground Railroad. And you can see that they, in New York at least, right up the Hudson River and out the Erie Canal over our ways to get north. And where are, if you look at this, you'll see where most of these um, lines are headed, other than just north. They're headed to, um, to Canada because in Canada, slavery was illegal. These people would be safe. They would be free. They'd be able to go on and live their life. And now then they'd also have to deal with the fact that they left their families, their friends, their, the people that they knew down in the South still in slavery, in bondage. So uh, it's just an extremely complicated and painful issue that um, is a small part well, not actually not that small. It's a very large part of the cause of the Civil War. Again, some more pictures of uh, these people. Take a look, read the captions, and get an idea of what it was like to be a part of the abolition movement. And we'll see you for the next video.